This is the tire and wheel test laboratory in the GM Proving Ground in Milford, Michigan. The Buick Know-How team has returned here to get some answers about the wheel and tire system concerns that some of you may have experienced. And when it comes to tire and wheel systems, the man with the answers is our old friend from a number of previous programs, Mr. Dick Grotz. Welcome back to Buick Know-How and thanks for inviting us to the GM Proving Ground. Glad to be with you again, Chuck. You know, Dick, people often ask why certain tires are used on a particular model. I understand that the tires used on Buicks and other GM cars must meet some pretty strict requirements. That's true, Chuck. All the tires we use on General Motors vehicles must meet a set of standards known as Tire Performance Criteria, or TPC. Tires are tested in the laboratory, out on our road system, both at the Milford Proving Ground here and at the Desert Proving Ground of Mesa, Arizona. Tires are tested for such things as traction, wet traction, dry traction, snow traction. They're tested for rolling resistance, wear, endurance, high speed capability, balance, uniformity, and a variety of other things. Some of the tire test equipment that we use here in the lab include the tire uniformity grading machine, or tug machine. This machine measures the tire wheel assembly just as it comes off the car under load. A drum loads the tire as it rotates, and this simulates driving down the road. Under load, radial and lateral force variation is measured. If we would like to measure the tire only, the tire is dismounted from the wheel, and tire only is measured on the Model 70 tire uniformity machine. Here, a perfect wheel is used, and we're measuring the tire only. Again, radial and lateral force variation is measured, and this will relate directly to how smooth the car feels driving down the road. Finally, the wheel can be measured on a wheel uniformity machine. Here, transducers come in and measure both bead seats at the same time for radial and lateral runout. Again, a round wheel will equate to a very smooth ride. I suppose it almost goes without saying that since this kind of attention is paid to matching tire performance to the vehicles, that it's very important that owners use tires with the correct TPC specifications. That's correct, Chuck. Buick owners can expect to get maximum performance and tread life when they use tires with the same TPC specification as came originally on their vehicle. Speaking of tread life, Dick, I read that in customer surveys conducted by J.D. Powers, the majority of people were totally satisfied with the tires on their vehicles. However, among those who suggested improvements, most commented that they would like tires to wear longer. That's right. After an owner has had his vehicle for a while, the tires eventually become worn and he's faced with replacements. On a vehicle equipped with 16-inch wheels, that can become very expensive. The length of tread life that people can expect from their tires depends on many factors, including the geographical area that they live in. For example, tires tend to wear more quickly in the mountainous states. Tread life is also affected by maintenance items, such as checking inflation pressure and how regularly tires are rotated. Wheel alignment can also be a factor in tread wear, as can the vehicle suspension components. Improper maintenance can lead to irregular tire wear. This example shows excessive shoulder wear, which can be caused by misalignment specifically excessive toe or excessive camber. This example shows some heel and toe wear. Slight amounts of heel and toe wear are considered normal. However, if left unrotated, the heel and toe wear may become significant. This example shows some cupping. Cupping can be caused, again, by misalignment or lack of tire rotation. Cupping may also lead to more serious diagonal wear across the face of the tread. Any time a customer complains of a vibration type problem, the first reaction is to road test the vehicle to verify the exact nature of the complaint. If at all possible, the customer must be present during this initial road test, so the exact complaint can be duplicated and identified. 
I know this is also true for many other conditions, but it's especially important that you verify and evaluate vibration concerns before undertaking any repairs. That's because it's always possible the customer concern may actually be a normal condition for which no repair is possible or even needed. It's also very important that the customer is made aware of the situation immediately. Once any undertaking is made to repair the condition, the customer will naturally assume there's a problem with the car and will expect the problem to be resolved. Then you'll most likely be faced with a comeback and the customer satisfaction with the car and the dealership could be greatly impaired. If a service technician is not involved in the initial evaluation, the service consultant must be sure to ask enough questions so there's plenty of information to identify the complaint for a proper diagnosis. Things to ask include, at what speed does the vibration occur? Can the vibration be felt, and if so, where? Can the vibration be heard as well as felt? Does engine or vehicle load affect the vibration? The Electronic Vibration Analyzer, or EVA, is a 12-volt powered device, similar to a handheld scan tool. The analyzer is equipped with a remote sensor, which is actually an accelerometer attached by a 6-meter cord. This sensor can be mounted anywhere on the vehicle to help pinpoint where a vibration is felt. A magnet is provided to secure the sensor to ferrous metal surfaces. It can also be attached to non-ferrous surfaces with the supplied Velcro or putty. For the most efficient use of your diagnostic time, it is recommended that you use the EVA during the initial road test. You may also want to hook up a scan tool to monitor engine speed during the test if the vehicle is not equipped with a tachometer. For the road test, set the EVA to the averaging mode. In this mode, the tool averages multiple vibration samples over a period of time. This minimizes the effects of sudden vibrations that are unrelated to the complaint condition. Attach the EVA sensor to the area where the customer says the vibration is most noticeable. Let's say in this case, it's the steering column. Then take the vehicle to a smooth level road where higher speeds are safe and drive at the speed at which the problem vibration is worse. To minimize torque converter input, drive in D3 instead of overdrive. The EVA displays the frequencies of the three vibrations that have the greatest amplitude. Frequency values are displayed on the left side of the screen and are followed by a bar graph that represent their relative strengths. The actual strength is shown in G's on the right side of the screen. By pressing an RPM Hertz button, the frequency value can be displayed in revolutions per minute or in Hertz. For convenience, the EVA has a snapshot function, so data can be recorded for viewing later. Up to 10 snapshots can be recorded. All current Buick service manuals contain a tire wheel rotation worksheet for use in diagnosing vibration complaints. After you've used the EVA or a read tachometer to identify the frequency of the complaint vibration, you can use the worksheet to convert vehicle speed at which the vibration occurs into a wheel speed frequency. This is done by comparing the vehicle complaint speed with the size of the tires. A chart is provided that gives the rotational speeds of the most commonly used tires when vehicle speed is 5 miles per hour. You'll find more details on this process in the Know-How Reference Manual. To illustrate a typical vibration repair process, we'll take a look at how to resolve a shake condition that's been reported by some owners of 1997 Park Avenue and Riviera models. The shake typically occurs while traveling at highway speed, particularly on smooth, flat road surfaces. The vibration may be felt in the steering wheel, through the seat, or in the floor. As we've seen, wheels and tires can be major contributors to vibration complaints. So, you should begin your vibration diagnosis by visually inspecting tire and wheel assemblies. Look for evidence of missing wheel balance weights, bent rims, or other damage. Also, look for any of the irregular tire wear conditions Dick showed us a little earlier. Check that the tire is properly seated to the wheel. 
by checking that the bead locating ring is evenly spread around the circumference of the rim. If no irregularities are found, and that includes any buildup of ice, snow, or mud on the wheel, check that the tire pressures are correct. All current Buick models use 30 PSI in the front and rear tires. Also, check that the engine cradle mounts are properly positioned and installed. Check especially the oval-shaped mount on the driver's side or rear powertrain. We're assuming for the purpose of this example that a road test has been conducted to verify the shake condition exists, and the tire and wheel assemblies are the apparent cause. So, our next step is to determine whether the tire or the wheel is causing the vibration. Label each of the tire and wheel assemblies to indicate their positions on the car, right front, right rear, and so on. Also, mark the position of each wheel relative to one of the studs. I know we're marking the tires a lot, but because of the nature of wheel vibration conditions, it's important that you reference the positions. I'm back in Milford now, and I'm going to remove the wheels one at a time and mount them on a recently calibrated off-car wheel balancer. The off-car balance method is more accurate. Now, the machines generally allow both static and dynamic balance to be corrected at the same time. Only static balance can be adjusted with on-vehicle balancers. Be sure to remove all stones from the tire treads before running the balancer and after each road test. If any tire and wheel assembly requires more than a quarter ounce weight correction, remove all the balance weights and balance the assembly over. Use only MC series coated balance weights and install them with a plastic tipped hammer. While the wheel assembly is still on the balancer, measure radial and lateral runout. To measure radial runout, wrap a piece of tape around the circumference of the tire's tread so you have a smooth surface for the dial indicator. Place the dial indicator roller against the smooth surface of the sidewall to measure lateral runout. Note the total radial and lateral runout for each wheel and tire assembly. If any measurement exceeds 30 thousandths of an inch, mark the location of the high point on the tire. Now, mark the position of the valve stem relative to the tire. Move the wheel assembly to a tire changer and break the bead loose. Do not dismount the tire from the wheel at this point. Apply a recommended rubber lubricant around the bead to make it move easier and rotate the tire 180 degrees so the mark you made for the valve stem is at the six o'clock position relative to the stem. This procedure known as match mounting can compensate for irregularities by matching the high point on the tire with the low point on the wheel. Usually rotating the tire 180 degrees will achieve this. If runout is still over the 30 thousandths of an inch, you may sometimes have to try rotating the tire a further 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise to bring the assembly within tolerance. If you are unable to bring a wheel tire assembly within tolerance by match mounting, the next thing to check is the wheel itself. Dismount the tires and measure both radial and lateral runout at the inner and outer bead surfaces on the wheel. If runout exceeds 20 thousandths of an inch, replace the wheel. If the wheel runout is within 20 thousandths of an inch, that would indicate that the tire is causing the excessive runout. Replace the tire with one from your normal source. Remember to check the runout of the new tire and wheel to ensure it is within 30 thousandths of an inch. Otherwise, the vibration condition may still exist. When you remount tires, always use rubber lubricant and overinflate to 40 PSI to be sure the beads are properly seated. Then, adjust pressure to the recommended 30 PSI. After a tire has been remounted, the lubricant can take up to three hours to completely dry. The wet lubricant could allow the tire to shift on the rim. For this reason, avoid heavy acceleration or braking during a road test. Mark the position of the tire at the valve 
so you'll be aware of any movement and possible loss of balance that occurs during vehicle operation. Remember, when a tire is dismounted for any reason, it must be rebalanced. When installing wheel assemblies on a car, always follow the proper wheel tightening procedure. Hand tighten all wheel nuts first. Torque each nut to half specification or 50 pound feet following the star pattern sequence. Using the same sequence, torque each nut to the full 100 pound feet. Never use any lubricant on the studs as torque readings may be inaccurate. If a road test indicates the shake still exists when the wheels have been reinstalled, evaluate which wheel position seems to be the major contributor. For instance, steering wheel shake generally indicates a front tire wheel problem. With the vehicle raised and properly supported, spin or drive the front or rear wheels to the complaint speed and evaluate the shake. Remember, when operating the front wheels with one side prevented from rotating, the speedometer indicates only half the speed of the turning wheel. For example, if the speedometer reads 30 miles per hour, the actual speed of the turning wheel is 60 miles per hour. Be careful not to overheat the engine. Also, remember to turn the traction control system off each time the ignition is cycled. If the shake is still present, try indexing the vibrating wheel by rotating the wheel to the next stud and rechecking for vibration. It may be necessary to try all five possible positions to find the best mounting position. Road test the vehicle. If the shake is still unacceptable, use an on-car balancer to perform a high-speed wheel balance. Leave the original weights from the previous balance in place and add more weights split equally between the inboard and outboard rim flanges. If the shake condition remains, call TAC for further instructions. Be prepared to review the procedures performed. Technical assistance will direct you through the procedures for returning the tires and receiving a screened set of tires. Well, that's all we have time for in this program. I'll see you again soon in the next Buick Know-How.